okay? Uh, one of my videos, I looked at the channel analytics and some people were coming from this video to my video. And I'm letting those guys know that me and this guy, Felix Rex, are polar opposites. I am pro-male, he is anti-male. He's anti-immigration, which means he's really anti-men coming into, his, into a country and competing with them. And I don't care about that. So we'll get into this. People that are currently on the move and with the West as their intended final destination, well, the social implications of this massive movement of people will become the defining issue of our time. While there are many things to consider, one aspect of the current migration toward the Western world stands out from other mass movements of people in recent times, and that is it's made up primarily of men, and especially young men. See, there's this issue here. He's, it's the fact that they're made of mainly young men. <clears throat> Competition for him. So I'm telling you now, guys, if all these immigrants were uh, uh, Brazilian bikini models, he wouldn't call them immigrants. He'd say, hey, they're women and they need a, a place to stay and a job. And he'd be, welcome them. <laughs> and these young men coming from places like Africa and the Middle East are arriving in such lopsided numbers as to skew the gender balance of some countries in Europe to the point. But these guys are coming from countries where there wasn't a gender imbalance, right? So why are they leaving them? These young men you showed, they, they, there was probably just as many women there as them. So why would they leave? Well, the, the women deselected them because they didn't have the resources. So they're coming to Western places to gain resources, go back and bribe them. So this is not a gender imbalance issue. This is a poverty issue for men point where, according to sociologists, this gender imbalance could possibly ignite massive social destabilization. And the reason- See, There's the threat narrative, the false threat narrative. He doesn't like these guys. People don't like men. Women don't like men and men don't like men. So that's all that's going on here. And he's looking for excuse to keep these guys out and keep them from competing for the special girl who wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. The reason for this is, is because evolutionary psychology, which stresses competition for females, can't just be turned off. You can't make this go away. See, and this is, is the double standards and hypocritical bullshit I have to deal with. Guys like Felix Rex is a biological reductionist when it's some, an issue that's important to him. But if it's an issue that's not important to him, then biology doesn't matter. You're a human being, not an animal, and you should just get over it and deal with it. And Felix, this is what I'm saying to you. I'm not an animal and supposedly not you, you're not either. So you just have to get over being deselected by the super people. Via more education or more income redistribution and everything will be explained in the next few minutes. <laughs> he just said it. More education and more resource uh, redistribution. There you go. Then it's not it's not about uh, a skew in the genders. It's because guys don't have the education and money to bribe a woman into their life. So immigration shouldn't even be a part of this talk, should it? Oh, by the way, is uh, Felix Rex. Does, is he against the PUAs who tell white Western men to go and shack up with uh, third world women when they can't get a girl in, in their own country? I bet he doesn't. I bet he's, he's not for, uh, these guys aren't considered immigrants, right? When they do it, they're, they're called uh, expats, but, they're, but they are immigrants. And they're fine with going and competing with the men there. So I don't care about men competing with this guy here, okay? In the world's most populous nations, China and India, men outnumber women by 70 million persons. 
The Chinese health authorities describe the gender imbalance among newborns as the most serious and prolonged in the world, and a direct ramification of the country's strict one-child policy, which has since been abandoned, but also for the Chinese preference for boys rather than girls. On average, 118 boys are born for every 100 girls, and this is compared to a world average of 100. There's one, do you notice the problem with this one? is that China, the, the, this imbalance is due to parental preferences. Mothers are looked after by their sons, not their daughters. So mothers choose to have sons over daughters. So if this is a problem, then what's, you know, what's Felix Rex? What's his uh, solution to this? Is he going to force mothers to obey some kind of rules or regulation? Doubt it. The other thing, this has nothing to do with immigration, does it? This is, this is a separate issue to immigration. So why would he even bring up immigration? 103 and 107 respectively. And why this is an issue is that because when there is a shortage of women in the marriage market, women can then marry up. Inevitably leading- Okay, this is bullshit. Women marry up no matter what the numbers are. No matter what the numbers are. If you have twice as many men and the vast as women, and the vast majority of the men are low status, nobodies, the women still won't choose them. Why do you think women become single mothers and go in the welfare state? So a vast, you know, vast numbers of women to men doesn't change anything. This is not a gender imbalance issue, at least not for population. Leading to the least desirable men having no marriage prospects whatsoever. According to Nicholas Eberstadt in his book, The Demographic Future, well, he projects that by 2030, that one in four Chinese men will never get married. And numerous commentators are predicting that this situation will lead to increased levels of antisocial behavior and violence. There's another thing he's missing out, Felix here. This antisocial behavior isn't because men can't get together with women. It's because single men are treated like shit in all societies. You know yourselves, all you guys, most social circles, you know, couples tend to, you know, stick with other couples. And single women will be invited and single men will be hedged out. So single men are treated like shit in all countries. That's what causes the antisocial behavior. You know, single men, even if they didn't get the girl, if they could just show up at a party and everyone would welcome them and be nice to them, they'd be all right, wouldn't they? So this has nothing to do with partnering up with women. And will ultimately present a threat to the stability and security of China. And there is empirical evidence for these prognostications of doom. Because no, there isn't. Whatever he says is going to be bullshit. His gender is a well-established individual level correlate of crime and especially of violent crime. It is a consistent finding across cultures that the overwhelming percentage of violent crime is perpetrated by young, unmarried, low-status males. But that has nothing to do with abnormal sex ratios, does it? Does it? Because after all, if you look at, you know, ghetto violence, let's say it's this place, I don't know what this picture came from, Detroit or New York or whatever, but that city, if there's a bunch of young men do violence, there's no gender disparity in population in any of the U.S. cities or even here in Canada. These young men just don't have the status to bribe a woman in their lives. So it's a poverty issue. It's not a sex ratio issue, is it? So that debunks anything he's about to say here. In China, young male internal migrant workers are thought to be responsible for a disproportionate amount of urban crime. A... That's bullshit. China has a billion people. It's a little bit of 
immigrants they would allow in wouldn't have anything to do with that. Also, if it was about immigration, why did you go on earlier about the sexual sex uh, ratios that were just natural in China in the first place? Especially violent crime. And it is reported that in China, internal migrants account for 50% of all criminal cases in the major receiving cities for internal migrants, with some cities reporting up to 80%. In India, a study carried out between 1980 and 1982 showed a strong correlation between homicide rates in individual states across that country and sex ratios in those states after controlling for potentials such as urbanization and poverty. I doubt it. I doubt it. Are you suggesting, for one thing, the sex differences, the ratios, the women aren't dying off, so where are they going? They're going to the cities. So for you to be correct about this, the rural areas would be the ones with the highest uh, murder rates, but I bet they aren't. I bet they happen in the cities where most of the women are at. And this gender imbalance could have devastating consequences for the 40% of humanity that live in China and India, as postulated by Valerie Hudson and Andrea Denbor. In their study, A Surplus of Men, A Deficit of Peace, Security, and Sex Ratios in Asia's Largest States. They predicted in their study that these men will be much more likely to be attracted to military or military type organizations with the potential to be a trigger for large scale domestic and international violence. Okay, Felix, I can debunk this immediately. The United States has the biggest bloated military in, in the world. All kinds of impoverished American men go to the US military when they don't have a job. And there's no surplus of men in the United States, is there? So again, this has nothing to do with the ratio of men to women. It's just that impoverished men do what they can to up their status. So are these young men that you're talking about, it has nothing to do with them being immigrants or because the country has more men than women. So that's simple. The authors also argue that sex imbalances could also impact regional and global security, especially because the surrounding countries of Pakistan, Taiwan, Nepal, and Bangladesh also have high sex imbalance ratios. And this next part is very important as we go forward in this presentation, because according to the authors, well, they suggest that a society will become inherently unstable when sex ratios reach something like 120 males to 100 females, because when a large number of men are doomed to bachelorhood, they get desperate. That doesn't mean anything. All you're saying is there might, the cry might rise. There's more uh, competition for men, for same women, who cares? That, that's not destabilizing anything. Now, the marriage effect. Now, this is bullshit. I'm going to debunk immediately. It goes to show you that Felix here is a marriage worshiper. And Felix, what makes you think for a split second that marriage changes anything for men? Backing this up is a study out of Harvard University using multiple specifications that also incorporate extensive time varying covariance in adulthood. Being married is associated with an average reduction of approximately 35% in the odds of crime compared to non-married states for the same man. Now, this is him getting cart before the horse. What's going on here is that the women select men with money. So who's likely to be a criminal? Men with money or men without money? The marriage doesn't change the men at all. These women aren't picking criminals and making them into solid citizens. They're choosing men with money who are solid citizens in the first place. So this is how this, <laughs> I, there's no reason to believe in any of the sources he's giving. 
compared to non-married states for the same man. In fact, the marriage effect is one of the most widely studied topics of life course criminology, and the contemporary consensus is that marriage promotes desistance from crime, and that, of course, the results are more consistent among young men. No, no. Again, there's two things going on here. One, again, the woman is selecting the man who has money in the first place. So he's not going to be a criminal if she can find one. Two, if marriage was so good, how about, does that include divorce men? If marriage was so good, how come, Felix, how come divorce is so prevalent in any first world country? And so if this woman marries this guy, then divorce rates him, and makes him pay child support, and he's living in his car, then he becomes a criminal because he's impoverished again. And now he wants to get a new woman and he, he can't uh, support himself. So again, this is about poverty. It has nothing to do with that. Marriage does not do what Felix is, is claiming. It does the opposite. It makes men poorer. Men have to work like dogs to bribe the woman in the first place. And then in any first world country, she's willing and able to divorce him. And then he becomes impoverished again. So he's just plain wrong. Are more consistent among young men. Likewise, divorce can send past offenders back into lives of crime. The shortage of women via polygamy is also often cited as being one of the strong factors that helps foster social dysfunction in societies of much of Africa along with the Islamic world and keeps these parts of the world from developing. This is bullshit. You know, married men getting together with women does not promote, promote you know, uh, the development of their country. Men like Tesla were, were bachelors and he pushed science forward. If anything, a married man has a shackle. He has to deal more and more of his energy into keeping that woman around, keeping her happy and keeping her around. A single man is free of that. There are all kinds of single men in the past that push society forward. So this is just wrong. Also, polygamy, it may be official in these countries, but unofficially, it still happens in the Western world. Women are willing to share a high status man rather than be, deal with low status men separately. As explained in The Economist, wherever polygamy is widely practiced, turmoil tends to follow. For example, the polygamous regions of Haiti and Indonesia are the most socially turbulent within those countries. And in fact, the 20 most fragile states in the world are all somewhat or very polygamous. And polygamous nations are more likely to invade their neighbors. What doubt it. Doubt it. Matter of fact, it's just, I don't just doubt it, it's bullshit. Polygamy breeds civil war. So the American Civil War was due to an imbalance in sex ratios. No, it's all. It's always about, you know, resources and your place on the hierarchy. So it, it has nothing to do with polygamy. One London School of Economics study found a strong link between plural marriage and civil war. Groups like Boko Haram and ISIS, for example, use what they interpret, they interpret, to be the theology of Islam as well as the example of the Prophet Muhammad, in regularly slaughtering the men of groups they believe to be heretical or disbelievers and then go on to sexually enslave their women. Sexual enslave, it's funny. If these guys kill off men and great, get, gain the women, uh, they're sexually enslaving them. But if Felix outcompetes other men and gets a woman, if he goes to a third world country and grabs one of the women, he's not sexually enslaving them, is he? He's just partnering up with them. And here's the thing. He's claiming ISIS are full of these young men who don't have a woman. So he's say, suggesting that men join ISIS to get women and then sell the women off. <laughs> it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So this is just a 
you know, slur against, you know, foreign men. That's all this is. And Felix doesn't give a shit about children anyway. He just cares about the women. All these guys are like this. <laughs> the old sex slave trade is bullshit. Most women that people claim are in the sex slave trade are just women who are willing to sell themselves to the highest bidder. They do it willingly because they don't want to deal with low status losers. In another study, Valerie Hudson, again, but this time with Hillary Matfest, found that a high bride price typical in polygamous societies is a critical factor predisposing young men to become involved in organized group violence for political purposes. There you go. This has nothing to do with sex ratios. Again, he's even backing up my claim now. This has to do with women needing to be bribed into a man's life. And they don't really want what, look, Felix, women don't really want to get with us men. That's why the bride price is so high. And so this is about a uh, poverty issue, but also about even men, it, they don't even have to be impoverished. They just have to be average. They just can't afford the, the bride price. So my uh, push to, to the violent conflict is actually to start training men to stop caring about getting with the girl. You know, if you can't afford the bride price, just accept. Now, what are you going to say? Notice that Felix here, he always talks about the problem, but he never gives it an answer to the issues because Felix is never willing to put any regulation on women. He'd like to, but he, he can't voice it because then his channel would be banned. And the groups they gravitate toward know this and exploit this. And unfortunately, when looking at Western Europe that has no cultural affinity toward polygamy or sex selective abortions, the same problems with regards to gender imbalance are being imported and all of its attending consequences are beginning to manifest themselves. This is bullshit. So the average guy in North America and in Europe that gets deselected, the, the guy who's not, who's just working at Denny's or McDonald's, he gets deselected by a woman and it's because there's more men coming into the country as immigrants? No, they have low status. So all this Felix guy says, look, I, I, I'm having a hard enough time competing with the men that are here. I don't want more men. That's all he's saying. In countries like Sweden and Germany. Oh, by the way, these young guys coming in, they have no money, right? They're looking for jobs. So they're not gonna outcompete the European guys. And that's why this threat narrative is not only false, but it's disgusting. Because obviously, Felix here, what he's really worried about is uh, foreign men getting a free ride, or just men in general, other than himself, getting a free ride or being taken care of. That's what he's his issue with. Because these, like I said, those poor, impoverished African men, they're not going to pick up white women. They are not able to. While the tsunami of migrants heading toward Western Europe has abated somewhat since 2016, millions upon millions of people from the developing world still want to make the welfare states of Western Europe their home. The vast majority of those that have already arrived are young men. It told you, called it. He's seen these young men get welfare. And these young men, by the way, I hope they do. Because I know as a man that if I'm in trouble, society tends to toss me aside. So I look forward to having young men come in and be taken care of. Because I guarantee as much as Felix goes about the, uh, the welfare state, he has nothing against women using it. Not really. Other than the fact that they might not choose him. But he would take care of women. If, like I said, if, if these were a bunch of Brazilian bikini models showing up here, he would be all for them getting welfare. You know, so this is all that it is. He's anti-male. 
Images of those young men being ferried by human traffickers to awaiting NGO boats, as well as those attempting to break down the gates in Spanish exclaves in North Africa, shows that this is a young, masculine affair. That's right. Society ditches the, their young men who can't provide for themselves. So, of course, the violence is because of that reason. It has nothing to do with just them not having girlfriends. It's because society disrespects them and doesn't care about them. That's why they become antisocial. The images of multitudes of women at train stations in Western Europe waving at arriving refugees in self-congratulatory ecstasy and with a sense of euphoric moral superiority holding aloft welcome placards, well, this has faded in 2022 and the mood of the continent has changed did this woman get together with one of these black guys, any of these white women? No, them congratulating them and saying so. These young men aren't competition for you, Felix. I mean, if you need competition, it's because you're a low status man and you couldn't do it anyway. So you're against the welfare state. Well, you're also for the free market then, right? But these guys coming in, what if they're not getting welfare? What if they're just taking up jobs that you could get? then all of a sudden the free market's no good either, is it? Because you're saying, hey, these guys are taking jobs up and I want that. So it has nothing to do with welfare or free markets. It's just that these guys are here and you don't like them. Considerably. And this can best be demonstrated by the sustained protest against open borders in Chemnitz in Germany a few years back after yet another grisly crime in that city. In an article published in the Irish Examiner titled Influx of Male Migrants Sparks Primordial Defense Response, Daniel Gross basically goes through much of the same information as in this presentation. This isn't a defense response. This is a disgust response. How do I know, Felix? Because I have a video, a very important one, which shows women in the UK in the parliament asking for an all male curfew in England for all men. People don't like men. Women don't like men and men don't like other men like you. You don't like other men. And so when there's a bunch of single guys just roaming around minding their own business, they still want to make sure that they're out of sight and out of mind. So this is, is not a defensive response. These guys aren't becoming criminals, not really, or attacking people randomly, any more than the young men that were already there. It's just that people don't like men. And so lots of single men who ha aren't vetted by that special girl, they don't like. That's all that's going on here. To explain the current rising populism and rejection of open border politics, throughout the western portion of the continent. While he suggests there could be some casual relationship between anti-migrant sentiment because of labor market imbalances, he notes that in Chemnitz, the unemployment rate is not so high at 7%. What he does, however, point out is there is not only a local sexual imbalance in the city, but the arrival of migrants is triggering a response rooted in evolutionary psychology again yes but the evolutionary psychology is that people don't like men it's not defensive it's it dis, it's disgust and uh what i've got to say is they they better get over it people have to start getting over the fact that single men are roaming around minding their own business this is me actually giving a, a what people should do something that Felix Rex here never does never know ever notice he never gives a solution or an, a, his opinion it's always just implied in the last you know why because if he gave his opinion his channel would probably be taken down people would be able to say oh so that's where you stand it's something that uh that people don't want to hear Several years, men, many of whom are aged 18 to 35, comprised more than two thirds of all the people seeking protection in Germany. Whereas the total number of refugees as a share of Germany's total population is small at around 3%, refugees form a far larger share 
of Germany's young male population. I See, it's small. So it's, it's not going to be a big gender imbalance, is there? He's admitting it's not a giant gender imbalance, even if it was an effect, which it isn't. So he just doesn't like young men coming into the country. That's it. Either way, Eastern Germany, which is already grappling with its own gender imbalance, that being the male to female ratio among the younger cohorts approaching 115 to 100, as educated women generally have a higher propensity than men to move to the western part of Germany to look for higher paid jobs. There you go. There's not really a gender imbalance at all. The women are just have higher education. Now, this is what Felix is never going to mention. What's the solution? Are he going to demand that women not get educated? No. But this is what I'd say. I'd say level the playing field. Women are getting preferences in education everywhere. And that I would abolish. They can still go to school. They can go for any course they want. But no more... Uh, no, no more quotas for women and no more free rides and no more, you know, throwing money at them to go join. My solution for, for one thing is to say, make the playing field level, level it the way it's supposed to be, have actual gender equality. And if men can't get women after that, that's, that's their tough luck. Now, what's Felix's uh, solution? The reason he doesn't get one is probably because it isn't egalitarian like mine. Like again, he and I are polar opposites. Part of Germany to look for higher paid jobs. And thus though, like China and India previously discussed, there is a significant share of Eastern Germany's young male population that has little chance of finding a partner and little chance of starting a family. As Eastern Germany already has the highest male to female ratio among 20 to 40 year olds. Again, it doesn't. He just said the women in one country just moving to another one. It's, so it's all, he's, all he's saying is that uh, the men aren't high enough status to get the girl. If these men in Eastern Germany was starting to make good jobs, the, the ratio would disappear. The gender imbalance, the women would start flood, flooding back into Eastern Europe or Eastern uh, Germany. So it has nothing to do with gender imbalance, like ratios, nothing. The implication in Gross's article- Or I should say he's got the cart before, before the horse. The gender differences are done because women choose men of higher income, that's it. Not the other way around. Is that, well, he points out that is, that hostility toward foreigners in Eastern Germany and perhaps across Europe may be rooted partly in a primordial defense response by local men who want to protect their territory, including their, that's in quotes, their women. From of course, exactly. These guys are, are, are such typical, you know, <laughs> the, they can't get the girl. And instead of just saying, wow, I mean, obviously, I have to up my game. They get pissed off at other men that succeed. Felix, why should I care about you guys who can't compete? I can't compete either. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> other men. And he concludes that those among the native population with the lowest incomes and educational levels will always be worse off if they have to compete with a large number of young male migrants, as when women are scarce, their value increases, and they tend to marry up. No, they always marry up. This is how dumb this guy is. If you double the population of men, if you double the population of impoverished men, you just double uh, the, the population of men who get deselected. These guys, these impoverished immigrants don't get the ladies. They don't actually compete for them. Well, they try to, but they don't get them. So even if they don't come, you're in the same boat. If you're a low status man, it doesn't matter if immigrants are there or not. You can't get the girl anyway. So this has nothing to do with even the competition. It's got to do with the fact that these guys don't like men.
They don't like foreign men. They don't like other men, period. So they want to call men away. As when women are scarce, their value increases, and they tend to marry up. In Sweden, the situation is even worse. Okay, this is as far as we need to go. I've said everything we need to say. This guy, his whole threat narrative is bullshit. It's false. And of course, it is also disgusting because again, all that's going on here is he doesn't like his fellow man. He doesn't want to see young guys come in and maybe get the girl and he doesn't or, or get welfare and have actually be taken care of as a human being instead of suffering away in their third world country. That's what he's against. He just doesn't like other men. And I hope these young fuck guys do come and get welfare and jobs and live a good life because I'm pro-human being and therefore I am pro-male. And that, so any of you guys coming into my channel from this guy's channel, no, I'm not this guy. He is, he is a one, he's black and I'm white. You know, we're opposite ends of the spectrum. So that's what I have to say about this.